Hey, what's going on, everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. Back at it again with the iServer AL0 after the PB Farmer release uh, a firmware mod and more to come in the future. I just wanted to talk about what we're seeing here, and that is with no heat sinks on the power stages or the MOSFETs, um, we don't really want to push this unit very hard. Thermals wise, everything looks fine. Chip temperature wise, everything looks good, especially because I already have fans on it um, and a duct already on it. The hottest chip is 56, so we should be fine. But more importantly, where are we at? Not only with the thermals on the power stage and the chip temperatures, but power draw on our power meter. Let me pull that up for you right now. And while I do have the normal kilowatt meter, I'm using my smart themes power meter, allow me to remotely power off and on this particular device. You can see right now, while one unit or one meter was giving me 92, 91 watts at the wall, the this Samsung one is showing me 109 watts, right? So we're, we're basically 11 watts under the 120 rating of this power brick and we don't want to really push it hard so the real thing is we probably should try to maximize our opportunities with the power supply we already have now we can push it to the 230 watts and if we switch back over to the computer uh we could probably get a little bit extra hash rate by boosting the offset just a hair i mean just a small percentage i like to do increments of 5 10 15 20 but understanding that we can't push this power meter too far and if we try to do that now let's see where the power meter pushes us to and we're definitely going to want to consider stepping it up to the 230 watt uh, power supply or even a 300 when additional firmware updates come in the future and we get to really stretch this uh, particular al zeros legs out even further now as you can see we Bumped up the clock offset. I played around with 5 megahertz first. Now we're up to 10 megahertz. And on the power meter, we're seeing we jumped up 2 watts. Not saying that every 10 megahertz equals 2 watts of power draw. But we might become unstable once everything settles in. We might become unstable. And now the unit is getting starved for power because the power brick is unable to provide it sustained um, you know, throughput. And right now we jumped up from 625 only up to 635 on the core clocks. This is definitely going to raise temperatures and is definitely going to probably improve or increase the power stage. I think the hottest temperature I've seen so far is 67 degrees Celsius. So we want to keep an eye on this um, as well as our power meter as we're tuning just on this 120. Realistically, what I want to do is down clock this thing and you can go negative. To try to make it as efficient as possible at the current with the current power supply of 120 watts uh not trying to have it consistently hit not trying to have the power supply consistently hit and stay at that 120 watts but i'm going to continue testing and tuning keeping my eye on the power meter to see how things are fluctuating how the chip uh, voltage is fluctuating how the cores are fluctuating the hash rate as well trying to be as stable and as safe as possible again no uh heat sinks on the mosfets yet haven't replaced the thermal paste and thermal pads yet but we will do that in a different video but it's the same process no matter what whether you're on the ks0 the pro the ultra the al0 the rx0 or whatever future model model ice river comes out with plain and simple Please note, while the KS zeros like the Ultra can we can push up to 1.49 uh, volts or 1,490 millivolts, the AL zero is only sitting around 350 millivolts or 0 0.350. So don't think just because you know how to test and tune the uh, you know the KS zero Pro Ultra whatever it might be that those same clocks and settings would apply here. The same tuning methodology might apply but the voltages are definitely different on these chips and i'm sure with future revisions maybe that is a al uh you know zero pro and ultra in the future we might see upticks in the voltages on those chips as those models come out but just be mindful of the voltage we can see here our highest one is yellow at 355 volts or millivolts 
So after hours of testing, what I settled on for stock PSU, stock internals, no cooling adjustments or thermal improvements, no more than 20 megahertz on the clock offset, and no more than 8 millivolts on the voltage offset. You could do 10, but you're hitting diminishing returns. And that's basically putting us around 420-ish giga hash average. I would say 425 when you can hit that kind of sort of on stock and we can see the power draw is at 118 so it's at the theoretical maximum of the 120 watt psu brick which longevity wise is going to kill this thing so leaving it at the stock settings at the 104 watts 400 and let's say 380 to 420 ish uh giga hash is where it fluctuates so about 400 is better now, the best thing to do in this circumstance is to, well, do some thermal mods and add a 230-watt power brick on it, which I will do um, in the next video. But as far as trying to find out the best that you can do with a stock internal, no thermal mods, stock power supply, 120-watt, hunt key, 19 volt, it looks like it's going to be 15 to 20 megahertz offset and 5 to 10 millivolts voltage offset but again i wouldn't go anything crazy when you're on stock everything including psu uh this is still new um and i'm sure with optimization from pv farmer we'll be able to see what other uh cool tricks we can do the alternative is to down clock right and again we could go negative you can see here in the chart uh i did go negative Right, I dropped down the power a little bit. The chip temperature dropped like a uh, a rock. The board clocks uh, went down to 605. So we could do about 600 megahertz on the chips, dropping the voltage. You know, negative. Let's say uh, I think I did 10 millivolts, so 3% decrease, and then negative uh, 20 megahertz which is a negative three percent decrease as well from base and while i don't have an exact like this is the best undervolt that's where i'm kind of sitting uh but i would still need further testing however share your thoughts down in the comments below i'd be interested to hear what you think and that's going to do it for today's video so do me a favor on the way out hit that like button make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date so let's check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here and you just have yourself a wonderful day take care I'll catch you next one.